Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders and the Amazing Paper Grace Die of the Month, and this is for April. Now, this die is one of those 3D vignettes, and it's going to create a typewriter. But I wanted to do something different. So, you can see these are all of the dies. Um, it's very easy, and what I will do is there is a video already created to show how you would put this together to create the 3D typewriter. I will have that linked below. It is actually done um, by Spellbinders and Becca Beacon, so you'll be able to see all of that. But it gives you all of the components for the typewriter. It's, it's really cool, very different. You know, when you first see this, you're like, hmm. But... I did something a little bit different. So this is going to be really sped up because I did want to keep everything into the video. That's kind of why I'm doing a voiceover. So one of the things we are going through very challenging times right now. So anxiety and stress is, is there. It's present. I find as I'm crafting, if I do backgrounds or ink smushing or things like that, that really helps me. So, for today's project with the Amazing Paper Gray Die, I'm going to do an art journal page. I haven't done those in a while. I've done a lot lately. Just saying. So, here, let's get started. I've got my spray tent out. I am using Tattered Rose, Aged Mahogany, and Tea Dye Oxide Sprays. I'm just spraying these and I'm going to fill in those white spots. I actually keep those napkins that I put in my box. Um, I actually use them in my junk journals for backgrounds. So I just wanted to fill that in. So I use these three colors. Um, I just put a little bit of a spritz when it comes to the aged mahogany. Um, but I really do like the way that these mix together. It's very soft. It's like a soft pink um, that you get. You do see, you know, the tea, the tea dye, um, because, of course, there is a brown tint to it. But, you know, kind of the, the tattered and the aged mahogany took over it. But I do like the way that this did look for the background, because I knew a lot of my focal elements, especially the typewriter, was going to be brown and black. So that's why I went with those colors. I try with my oxides to get different shades together. Um, I mean, you can always do, you know, the red, the orange, and the yellow, and the blue, the green, and the purple, or, you know, the red, the pink, and the yellow. Um, to me, they're, they're the norm, and they're always the go-tos. Um, but I like to throw different colors in, you know, reds and greens, because the oxides, as long as they're, when they're layered, they will stay layered. You won't get too much that'll mix together. Okay, that was a lot, Gavin. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, there's my panel, so I'm going to set that aside. The next thing I want to do is I want to create some ink smushing panels. Yes, yeah, see, ink smushing. It's the other thing that I found I absolutely love. So for this, I am using... Uh, tumbled glass, broken china, and I believe I'm pulling in, no, it's just broken china and evergreen bow, bow, however you want to say that. I always do that. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have um, each layer, even for the distress inks. These are not my oxides. I'm actually using my distress inks. Um, making sure that in between each layer, they are dry. And yes, I'm not wiping away too much ink this time. Yes, I really made people upset that last time, but there was someone that said it best. It was to save the video time, but that's okay. Um, I'm sorry, I used tumble glass, broken china for the ink smushing, and then I put a little bit of the evergreen down so that I could do the splatters on that all right so i wanted the the darkness of the evergreen to just be the splats and that's what i'll call those i am making sure that each panel is is dry 
Um, I do like to force it and then not completely. And then I will set them aside so that those drips can do whatever it is that they want to do. I also get it to a point where it's dry so that more splats can get on this, whether the splats are the darker shade or whether it's just water. Because again, these will re-react, these inks, the, dist the distress inks, um, with, each, uh, with water. So I can get these huge droplets, and I don't like to pick up the droplets. Um, I like to let them seep into the paper because it just creates this very different look. So for this one, I am using Bundled Sage, and I am using... i got to look it up. Um, oh my goodness, I can't remember, and I don't think I wrote it down. Oh, yay me. Yay me. Just found it. Okay. So, those two colors. <laughs> Do you expect anything less? Is uh, Aged Mahogany and Bundled Sage. So two very different colors, usually, you know, a red and a green. Usually if you mix these two, you're going to get brown. We refer, I like to refer to it as mud. All right. Um, but I'm not getting that. Again, I'm drying in between. And I just wanted that hint of that green in the back. So I'm going to tape down. Um, that's my craft mat. Um because it keeps on sliding on me. Okay, so we got the backgrounds and I got my two panels done. So here's going to be our focal point. So I am gonna show you how to put the top layer together if you're using it to put it on a card. In this case, again, I'm using it for a junk journal. So you can see you have the dies that say New Flash, uh, or excuse me, News Flash, and there's another sentiment available as well. I am going to cut off the side tabs on this because, again, I'm not running it or having it go through look like it's going through the typewriter. I mean, I'm going to put a slit, but those tabs on the side are what helps create the 3D level in the typewriter, but I'm not going to need them. So I did cut those off. I used a black piece of cardstock out behind my stamped or cut out image of newsflash and then i put another piece of cardstock behind it just to give it some strength i did use as you can see a piece of book page um, for that top one i'm using my craft cardstock for the main part of the typewriter the other colors i'm using are black gold metallic and ivory now you cut many rings for the keyboard. Um, I like the fact that it's an old fashioned typewriter. So I'm not going to have you watch all of this, but I did put a gold ring on each one where it is embossed onto the keys. And it just adds a little bit of dimension. I'm going to layer a couple of my gold pieces. So, you know, the, the, the knobs um, and the bolts, all of those were cut in metallic the gold metallic cardstock by Spellbinders. I am, I did double those. Since this is my focal point, I wanted it to have dimension on its own, um, even though I'll be propping this up. So just by double layering some of the pieces, it, it will help you give that dimension. Now this here is the um, return, the return bar. So I'm going to do three layers for that. And then now we can start placing our pieces onto our typewriter. So I'm going to set the, the screws in first, which then our plates then come in around it next. Now I'm going to set those in because this gold plate, they're the, the, the typing keys that come up. Um, I've got to make sure that I have plenty of room for that and I set that in place as well. Once I have, now these pieces are just laying flat. Now I'm going to place the gold, that's like a gold knob, 
that's going on. We're going to set our keyboard onto, you notice how I'm saying keyboard? That's funny. Um, down onto our base. The key sets are going to now be placed. And this piece, that craft piece, is embossed. So it does have identifiers, you know, where your pieces can go. Spacebar, I did in gold, just to give that some accent. And then the pieces that we have left is basically the, the bar, the, the piece that slid where you put your paper in and that slides back and forth as you're typing. So this is the last piece. I do want to get the embellishments on there first just to make sure that they're set. And then I'm going to just set the typewriter on top of that because again, the bar actually is inside the typewriter. So you want your main piece to come up on top. Again, the video does a very good job showing how it is put together. Um, and again, I'm looking just for the front panel, uh, but it does show how to do the 3D vignette. So that's what it looks like so far. And then the last piece that I have to put is the, the measuring bar so that we knew where our one inch margin was or half inch. So yes, I remember these typewriters. Yes, I do. I still love them. I think they're great, but I don't know. I guess I'm nostalgic. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> I'm thinking. I don't know. So there's our focal point. And you can see that newsflash is going to come out. Now I'm going to grab my straight edge metal ruler and a craft knife. And I just set that piece down so that I knew how wide it needed to be. And that's going to sit in there on an angle coming out of that typewriter. Now I'm just going to get that glued in place so that it doesn't move because I like how that looked. So now when it comes to these panels that I created, I'm going to use my deckled edge scissors and I'm going to cut two of those out. Okay. I'm not sure. I think my video just flipped. So if it did, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to use those scissors to cut out two smaller panels, like they're pieces of, of paper. Yes, I do save those scraps. I'm going to come in with my vintage photo. As you see, the vintage photo was all over this piece. Okay. I went all around the typewriter. I'm going to go around these pieces here. I went around the newsflash that the typed piece of paper that's coming out. So it's, it's a big part. So I grabbed my, this is a script stamp set that I always use um, when I art journal, just to give it a background. I'm using my potting soil um, archival ink for that background. I'm then looking for, every time you see me walking away, that's because I'm grabbing something because I do this. When I do an art journal, or even when I'm doing my junk journals, um, the mind, my mind just keeps going. And it's like, okay, now wait a minute. No, I want to do this. No, wait a minute. I want to do this. Um, when it comes to my cards, I kind of sort of have a, have a plan. Um, and everything's kind of right in front of me when it comes to that. When it comes to all of these other things, it's kind of all over the place over in the room. So that's why I'm walking away. So I pulled out my aged mahogany, back to the journal page, and I pulled out a couple stamps by Tim Holtz. So this one, of course, is a, like a ruler um, type stencil. I said stamps. It's a stencil. And uh, the reason why I always use, again, the, the person that inspires me all the time when it comes to art journals, and you can definitely see it here, is Vicki. Um, and I say Vicki P. Um, because I know I will ch badly say her last name. Um, I just, I, I love the way that she puts these together. I love the, I mean, she's got a process. Um, and I just love the way that, you know, she kind of incorporates things that she has 
um, when it comes to her journals. So you can definitely see she is an, an influencer for me when it comes to my art journals. So I use the stencil in the back. Um, I'm going to hold off. I thought I was going to use that alphabet. I like the craziness of it, but I really like the rulers um, in the background. I have some of this corrugated paper. So I'm just tearing it, and I will use my vintage photo on that. You can see I'm using lots of double-sided foam squares. And yes, that's because I couldn't find my double-sided foam tape. So, we use what we have, right? Right. Um, and pretty much the corrugated paper is what's going to come across. I didn't want to um, add too much more to the background. The only thing that I will come in with, um, I will use uh, my white gesso and put some white splatters in the background. Um, just to give it that effect as well. I think it looks like it's snowing. It's kind of cool. I do have that piece that hang off, so I'm going to trim that and then just keep tearing pieces and they're going to come in off of the right edge of the page. Again, tearing paper does relax me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I find it very therapeutic. <laughs> so again, I keep placing the focal point, which is the typewriter, just to make sure that it's still, it's almost framed within all of that. You can see what I did with those two panels. They are going to come in onto the back. So again, and I'm going to add one of these labels, you know, newsflash, create art. Um, again, it's a wonderful, for me, it has been a wonderful stress um, and anxiety reliever for me. Um, you know, again, these are challenging times. Um, I keep telling myself that this too shall pass. We will come through this. Um, but this, this type of, of work does, um, does absolutely help me. It's, it's kind of funny. I mean, I do laugh, um, when, as, as I'm doing this, but, uh, thank goodness for my room. Um, very thankful that I do have that. <laughs> I'm not sure what I would be doing. Um, is that I am, I am an essential worker. Um, out there um, in the field. Um, and I'm very honored to be doing that, actually. Um, so that I know what I'm doing actually helps people. Um with the needs that they may have. Um, so it actually helps <laughs> when I go, but this does too. So you will see, this is the first of many. Um, there will be more art journals, um, ink smushing <laughs> things. Um, I just find they work. Um, okay. Back to the thing there. Um, I am using my stamp set called it is by Stampers Anonymous, and it is called Etc. Um, so I pull in the numbers. Um, I do, you know, Vicki does that. She uses the top of that one stamp. You can see I haven't used anything else on that stamp, but it helps to give a border around the outside. Now, even though um, I'm coming in around, so I do like to add black, even though it may not be part of it. So that's why I'll always put some black pieces within my focal point or my stamping, um, because then that black provides that border. Now I could have used, um, a, uh, a, what's that color called? Uh, a vintage photo for my edge. 
um, but I actually do either like using ground espresso or black soot um, when it comes to my outer part. Here I'm coming in with my uh, white gesso for the speckles, and I do that once I put my border around um, and some of the pieces down onto the page. This page does measure um, seven and a half by seven and a half. And actually what these pages are, they are from a Delusions art journal. I love those art journals um, so much that I carried it with me everywhere and I dropped it in a puddle. So, <laughs> yeah. So what I did was I just deconstructed it and I was able to save a section of the pages, um, which were seven and a half by seven and a half. And then I just used a hole puncher and I'm using rings um, to put them in. <laughs> That's how I'm binding them. Um, again, I get creative. So I took off all of the release paper and I set my focal point in place. Um, and that is pretty much how the page is going to, to look. Um, I did add, which I didn't show on here, I did add some white gel pen lines and some black lines using my Faber-Castell. Um, just to give some of those highlights. They were very sketchy. Um, I do come in with my date stamp just so that I can have that. And I do also stamp it on the back in case I can't see it on the front. Now, of course, I can in this case. So I do hope you enjoyed this. I know it's very different. Usually when it comes to the Amazing Paper Grace dies, I'm always creating a card or creating what it is but for some reason when I saw that typewriter and I when I saw what it looked like it just you guys know me vintage is what I do like it's the themes that I usually do go into and that's exactly what I saw so I thought it would be something just a little bit different and to show that you can take your dies and make them into something else use them for other things we don't have to limit ourselves to what we see and what we know that's in front of us. Open and see what you can create. As always, the products that I use will be listed down below, and if you have any questions, please leave those down below as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you here as part of my group. Make sure you hit that button, ring the bell so that you know when the next video is live, and make sure you hit the thumbs up. Please, everyone, enjoy your day, enjoy your time. Stay safe, stay healthy. But by all means, always remember what's most important. Always be creative.